people expect a more beneficial relationship with his administration. And his pick of Anthony Blinken as Secretary of State also bodes well. Blinken has expressed support for stronger U.S.-Africa relations. Also, what role would Kamala Harris play in this relationship as she'll be the first female of color to hold the vice president's office? Let's discuss all of this now with political analyst Professor Spamanja Zondi from the University of Johannesburg. Prof, very good morning to you, and thank you very much uh, uh, for your time. There are a number of issues that have been bubbling in the relationship between U.S. and Africa, but historically, over time, even when a Democrat was in the White House, we've seen largely an Africa policy that's been reactive and fairly conservative. Should we expect more of the same with Joe Biden? Yes, you are right. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, good morning to, to, your, to your viewers. Uh, it's certainly, we should expect a kind of conservative foreign policy uh, towards Africa. It tends to be the same. It tends to hinge... Uh, on uh, on AGOA, you know, the African Growth and Opportunities Act uh, frame uh, uh, of trade relations. Uh, uh, secondly, on aid, especially around health issues, and HIV AIDS, mainly PEPFA, it's called, and general development aid. And, 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 and then lastly, uh, security cooperation, which is a kind of difficult and all that, but it doesn't really ever change from from government to government. I mean, if you look at it carefully, the the uh, the Africa policy under Trump is pretty much similar to the Africa policy under Obama, or under Bush before that, uh, because things do not quite really change. Because Africa is far low. Uh, among the priorities, foreign policy priorities of the United States. And that is a good one for Africa, which means that we don't get uh, buffeted by the changing winds and, 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 and waves and ebbs and flows in, the, uh, in Washington. Yeah, you've mentioned AGOA, the, 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 that uh, Growth uh, Opportunity Act that they did. And under Trump, we saw it being put aside a little bit. And some countries were benefiting more from some bilateral deals, like Kenya, for example. They have a, a bilateral trade deal with the U.S. Do you think uh, Biden will then ramp up uh, AGOA again, become center stage, and that countries like Kenya need to worry? I, I think we should not exaggerate the, the, the importance of that bilateral relationship that uh, the Trump administration had with, with, with uh, Kenya after tensions regarding the importing of second-hand goods, uh, clothing uh, from the United States uh, with Kenya and with, with, and with uh, uh, Rwanda. It was a bilateral agreement that was meant to solve a specific issue not to redefine the relationship with Africa broadly. Agoa remained the prism through which uh, the U.S.-Africa okay. um, trade relationship was managed. Okay, can this change now? Do you think Biden will embrace and try and show support for the African continental free trade area that was just uh, instituted uh, this month of January? It will depend on how the United States' interests are are read in that, into that environment. The United States sees Africa increasingly as a background against its, its adversaries, Russia and China. So how it takes decisions is usually based on how it calculates uh, are the best ways to fight that battle. So we become, therefore, a ground on which these fight, this fights take place. And in this particular case, too, um, uh, if there is a, an attempt to increase trade with Africa, it would be to checkmate Russia and China. And, and it would be good for Africa because we increase the trade. And this fight between, over Africa would be good for us because if we were played strategically, we can make gains from both sides. But over the long term, it might also be harmful okay. because we might get trade in areas we don't need and get investment as in areas we least need. Okay, away from trade, should we look, for, uh, look to see a, a U.S. administration under Joe Biden 
getting involved in trying to resolve some of the conflicts in Africa. I'm thinking here of the, of the brewing conflict that is now in his fourth year in northern Mozambique the, 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 uh, by the Islamic insurgents. I'm thinking of the conflict uh, in Libya. And, of course, we saw the U.S. Embassy uh, uh, in Kampala not happy with the Yoweri Museveni election victory this week uh, amid the violence that led up to the election. Uh, the, the way the United States usually responds to Africa's political and, and, and security challenges is through the prism of war on terror. And the Democrats are very big on this war on terror thing. So fighting Arab, uh, uh, the Arab world issues on the African continent rather than dealing with the African problem themselves, uh, seeing al-Shabaab as an extension of al-Qaeda, seeing... Uh, all the challenges, even this one in, in Mozambique, in Democrat uh, thinking, is an extension of a global war on terror. It may help to, mean, to increase uh, uh, security capacity on the continent, but it is not actually solving an African problem. It is solving some other global problem, and that may be a, a weakness. Okay, now, now Prof, uh, finally... But we should expect a more yeah. interventionist foreign policy because Democrats intervene a lot more than Republicans. So we'll have to wait and see what that intervention would look like for northern Mozambique, uh, for example, in that conflict in Libya. Now, before I let you go, uh, Prof, um, uh, we have that very influential, well, we saw them under the Ob Obama administration, the very influential U.S. Uh, Congressional Black Caucus that uh, some African leaders will, will look to, to to try and see if, uh, as they call them, the CBC, the, 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 the Black Caucus, the Congress of Black Caucus, can also speak on behalf of Africa. And Joe Biden's administration, you look at his composition, how diverse it is. I mean, let alone from the gender perspective, also on the race perspective. Do you think African leaders will, 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 will see this as an opportunity to get an inside voice in Congress from the U.S. Congressional Black Caucus? The U.S. US strategic and foreign policy interests do not change with change of administration. It remains the same. What this, which you talk about, may help is to, to plant the harder part, the sharper part, of those strategic interests. It may help you to negotiate for a softer intervention, but it will not stop a U.S. intervention, which is usually disruptive, which usually creates more problems than it, it, it solves. As we saw in Libya now, it was a, a Democrat intervention, and it still stays with us, and Libya is in status. So the, the, the Black Congressional Caucus is a, a, a platform we use to try and appeal for a, a kind of more greater understanding and more cooperation with Africa itself rather than bulldozing into Africa to solve a uh, U.S. strategic interest. And I hope it will work. It didn't work in 2011 when the Obama administration uh, invaded Libya and, and, and assassinated its leader. It might work now. It didn't work also uh, the, the, around the same time in the, in the U.S. Uh, bombings in, in Somalia. Perhaps it will work this time. Would I be fair, as I conclude, uh, Prof, to say, after all, with that uh, historically reactive and conservative foreign policy towards Africa by the United States, regardless of who sits in the White House, it's going to be also up to African leaders themselves to tell Joe Biden and his team what they would like to see happening going forward from a cooperation perspective. Uh, sorry, I missed the, the, your broke. I didn't, I didn't get the full question at the beginning. I was saying, uh, from what you've said, we don't expect much to change. It will still be a conservative foreign policy towards Africa. But having listened to you now, would I be wrong in saying it's also going to be up to African leaders themselves to express uh, their wish of how they want to see cooperation going forward with the U.S. under Biden? Yes, it is true. Uh, the African responses to U.S. foreign policy has also been very reactive. It tends to be uh, reactive, not very coherent, and not very clear about what we, want, we would like from the United States. Uh, we did not take the opportunity of the first black leader in the U.S. who was Afri of African ancestry, Obama, and, and work around it to strategically influence U.S. foreign policy. I suspect we might not have to do it right now because of the kind of leaders we have. Uh, we are just unfortunate that we have leaders. I've just mentioned now the leader of, uh, of Uganda, who's 
to come back for like the umpteen times. It's very tired, no new ideas, no fresh thinking. It is quite common right through the continent that very few leaders have that strategic argument. Uh, to enable us to negotiate this very strategic relationship in a strategic way, just as we do not do with Russia, with China, with Japan, and the rest of others, unfortunately. Thank you very much.